Hey guys, it's Matt Lucas with Kai Hollenbeck. Um, hey Kai. Um, we, I'm over in Team USA and I stopped by, decided I'd uh, talk to Kai a little bit. Um, so Kai, how did you get into fighting? Um, it's actually kind of similar to Mike. I was uh, kind of had some trouble with school and looking for a looking for a, an outlet for all the anger and like aggression that I had going on. So um, I was going to do karate, and my brother because my brother does karate, and uh, he didn't want that, so I jumped into Muay Thai instead. Uh -huh. It's kind of a better fit for me too. When uh, did you get into it? I was 15 years old when I started, uh -huh. about 10 years ago. Did you have any other athletic background? Uh, sure, I was actually, a, I started out as a gymnast, uh, honestly, as, uh, from like six years old until like 12 or so, uh -huh. as a gymnast, and uh, then I went into wrestling, and then played a lot of sports, like team sports, like football and stuff like that, and then mm -hmm. in between there, uh, jumped into Muay Thai. Yeah. Can you do backflips or anything? Yeah, sure. like, I do, yeah. I jump in the ring, every time I jump in the ring, sometimes I'll flip around, and I did that when I was in China, they had me do that all the time, every time oh, really? I fight. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Um... So, uh, how old are you now? 25. 25. 25. And what's your record? Uh, it's in the, th the low 30s for wins. It's like 32 now and 32, 1 and 1. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and you've been pretty active the last couple of years. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's how I got up so high so fast. Was, yeah. I was... Uh, it was like doing 10, 10 fights a year, like 9 or 10 fights a year, trying to like... Over in China, I would do like... Two fights, like in two weekends, back to back, like back to back weekends, I would fight. So, it was a, uh, it was good. I mean, it, it helped kind of calm my nerves a little bit. I'm a lot more relaxed now. I feel like mm -hmm. when I'm in fights, so it's good for me. Um, do you work at all, or is the fighting enough? I mean, if you're fighting ten times yeah, a year, fighting, fighting uh, it can be enough. Like sometimes I'll do some little like something on the side, like train somebody or like private lessons or something like that, but. Yeah, mostly everything I do to make my money is coming from Muay Thai now. Uh -huh. So fighting or teaching. Um, you recently had your first seminar with uh, with over... the Can't Stop Crazy Crew. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, yeah that was that was the first time I'd ever done like a seminar mm -hmm. style thing. It was actually pretty cool. Yeah. What did you like about it? Um, I liked the there was the actually we all all the, the Can't Stop Crazy guys talked about. It. I actually I, I feel like the Can't Stop Crazy guys learn more than from each other than we were, than we taught to other people like. We all, uh, we all were talking like, oh, I learned this from you, I learned that from you, I learned this from you, and like we all implement everyone else's stuff now. So, um, but it was, it was also good getting to know like people and like getting to interact. Cause I mean, that's what, that's what you want. Like, I'm all out. We train all the time, and people, people send us Facebook messages or anything saying like that. But like getting to talk to them face to face was pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, so you've become part of the Can't Stop Crazy crew. Why uh, did you make that decision? Um, it was really just uh, because we had a we had a bunch of guys who uh, who were cool. There were some like some guys are cool, some guys are not so cool. Those guys are cool, so uh -huh. it was just yeah, it just kind of worked out. Yeah. What um what is the goal or your goal with it? Um, the goal is to uh, just to promote our. It's pretty much to promote the the people in Can't Stop Crazy and just to to so that we get to determine like what is. Is like how how we're viewed by other people, like how mm -hmm. we how we present ourselves. It's like we have control over what people see and how how we how we make our money and all that kind of stuff. Like we ha we're, we're kind of trying to take control and also spread the spread the sport and just get involvement with people involved in the sport. Uh huh. Um, so you've been fighting a lot internationally. Mm -hmm. Your last one in the states was the San Francisco one. The last one, yeah, that was a. Uh, before that, it had been a couple couple months almost probably close to like a year since yeah. I had and but I had been fighting uh, overseas I was in Italy and uh, Holland and uh, most recently Sweden how do you like fighting internationally it's honestly the uh, you can tell the difference between the, the level of uh, understanding in the crowd like there's a lot more people that understand like what's happening and there's it's a uh, it's a uh, it, the, the, the promotions like they treat the, they treat fighters a lot differently out there. They're a lot more, um, I would say, accommodating seems like the wrong word because I mean it would seem that like promoters here wouldn't do that. But like promoters here are good, but over there they just anything you need. Like if you wanted a 
sandwich at two in the morning, like you call somebody and, and get that sandwich. Like they're really, really accommodating. So yeah. it's nice. Do you have like a bowl of Skittles with only yeah, something like that? Like I want only green. green. No, it's nothing that serious. I don't think any any fighters that high maintenance, but it's a. Uh, it's nice to, to be taken care of the way that they, they're just 100% like in your corner wanting everything to be perfect for you. Awesome. Um, so you've signed on for Glory. What does that entail? So the Glory tournament is a 16-man tournament, 154 pounds. It's K1 style. Um, the K1 rules, no, so the clench and then no elbows and then clenching for only a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, honestly it's some of the best in the world. It's got uh, Giorgio Petrosian at that weight. Uh, Albert Kraus is in mm -hmm. it, um, a ton of other guys, and uh, I mean I could mention them all, and they all have yeah. like prestigious like accolades. So, mm -hmm. um, but I mean I'm I'm one of those guys now. Like we are, we we made it through the first round. I fought uh, Mike Corley in uh, what was it, August, April or something, uh, a while back, a couple months back, and uh, won that in Sweden. So now I'm in the final eight with all the other guys, and we're going in uh, to Monaco in in two weeks to do our draw to see who we're going to fight. So. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Yeah. What, is there a big prize at the end as well? Yeah, so the, the grand prize is 300000 So uh -huh. the winner gets, so this, in uh, November 3rd, we'll have our fight. So it'll be eight, all the eight fights will fight. So there'll be four fights, and then the winners of those four fights will fight each other. Mm -hmm. And then the winners of those two fights will fight each other. And the winner of that will take home the 300000 And that's all going to be on one night on April 3rd, or, uh, sorry, November 3rd in uh, Rome. Oh, Italy. awesome. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um, is there anyone in particular you you want to fight um, in people, the tournament? People, yeah, people have asked me that a lot. Um, everyone asks me if I want to fight Petrosian first, if I want to save him for last, or if I want to, I mean, how, how I mean, th to be honest, every single one of those fighters yeah. is a dangerous fighter. So. Yeah, I mean, Kraus is Krause getting is a little older, he's but, older he's but he's still, still dangerous. Every, I mean, every one of those fighters, there's a... Uh, even like even some of the uh, the the less the less known guys like uh, there's a fighter uh, from the UK I'm, it's, I can't I'm struggling with his name Tim or Tom or something like that. he's a uh, he's he's not as well known as some of the other guys but I mean same as me like I'm not as well known as some of the other guys mm -hmm. but just because you're not well known doesn't mean that these guys aren't at the same exact level that any of these other guys are at so everybody's no matter who you go against it's going to be tough I think I would like to fight someone someone with the name just to. Just because I, 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 well, when am I ever going to get a chance to fight him again? You know, I might never yeah. get that chance again. So someone like Petrosian or, or Albert Crow, someone that would, someone that I know will give me a tough fight. That's what mm -hmm. I want. Somebody that'll fight hard. What's uh, your goals with fighting? It's just to, um, honestly, just to see how far I can push myself, and uh, if I can, if I can make a living doing it, I would love to do that. Um, it seems like it, it's going to be harder and harder now. The more that I, the more that I think about like how I'm going to make enough money to, 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 to have a house and have a family and all that stuff. So, But, I mean, the goal is to just take it as far as I can for now and and hopefully make it a staple in my life. Yeah. Uh, what's the hardest thing about fighting for you? Uh, the weight cut for me is probably one of the harder things. Mm -hmm. um, and the, uh, the attitude that I have after, like, while I'm getting ready for a fight, I kind of flip a switch and kind of turn into an asshole, which, I mean, I think everyone has that, mm -hmm. but I, I struggle with it, I feel like, a little bit more than others. Um, and when, I'm, when I'm cutting weight, I cut from 185 to 155. Ooh, so, that's a lot. Yeah, that 30 pounds is, it's not so bad until the last couple couple days, but then, I mean, I'm really not a good person to be around, I'm angry all the time, so that's one of the hardest parts for me. The fight itself, and the training is, is also hard, the fight itself is like that celebration where you're just happy to be there, happy to, you, all the work that you put in, you get to to show off pretty much, like you just get to have fun that night, so that really isn't that difficult for me, but the pre preparation beforehand and cutting weight and all that stuff, that's the hard part. Um, and where do you think uh, U.S. Muay Thai is going? It's, it's been on the rise, I'm hoping it continues to, to skyrocket, I mean we've been we've been gaining in popularity, we're, we're starting to, there's starting to be like TV deals going on, I know that Gloria is trying to get a deal with, with the U.S. Um, network and there the there was that Muay Thai team in America that I, I um, recently heard mm -hmm. that there's a that that might be getting started up again. Oh, they got really? picked up by a, a network according to what I heard. So I mean, it'd be it'd be nice to see that uh, to see that progression to see it start to get on the same level as the the UFC out here. I mean, overseas I would say Muay Thai is probably more even more popular than the UFC is out there. But mm -hmm. 
uh, but in the in the U.S. where we are, it's not. It would be nice to be recognized. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have, have the sport be legitimized here. Um, great. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Um, do you have anything else you'd want to say? Uh, yeah, I'd like to I thank some of my sponsors. That's cool. Yeah. yeah Why not? Uh, try, yeah, nice job. Man. Uh, Triumph United, Osiris Shoes, um, uh, Savage Inc., uh, Ryu uh, uh, Sportswear, RYU, Respect Your Universe. Mm -hmm. um, all those guys. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of if I'm forgetting anybody. Uh, Nazuki, uh -huh. uh, Fightwear, and yeah, that's about it. Cool. Well, uh, thanks a lot, Kai. Uh, no problem, man. Thank you.